the IC 9700 from ICOM. Now, this, I've been waiting for one of these for quite a while, and um, they, we, we've got the demo at work, and uh, I brought it home for a day. Um, now here, I've got an MX um, 3, uh, 3000N. Now this is the triplexer, one of those. Uh, from diamond and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that to that so let me get this uh, hooked up for you and on the roof I have a collinear which is capable of um, pretty much um, two meters right the way through to 23 sems it's a comet antenna um, I've had it for a very long time and it seems to work all right it's not great it's not bad either i'll walk you through what's on the back of the radio here um number one 23 sems antenna port 70 sems antenna port and two meters uh antenna port as i go along i'll sort of i'll say sort of positives and negatives as i come as i come across them i think that's probably the fairest way of doing it i like the fact that there are n types on the 70 sems and on the 23 sems that's fairly unusual for icom to do however if they were doing that why on earth did they put a pl259 um, or so239 connector on here they might as well just put another n type on for the amount of money that it cost um right what else is on the back here down here you've got an ethernet port um, and that will enable you to do some quite funky stuff, I'm told, with um, the ICOM software. Hopefully they'll do some support for third party as well. Down here you've got 10 meg of reference. Um, I'm also told that there may be some quirks with that. Um, what they are, I don't really know yet. I, I will try and put the detail in the description below um, as and when I find out. And then links maybe through to my website. Here you've got the typical ICOM accessory port. Here you've got the data port, which you use for your GPS and all that sort of good stuff. Um, you can, if you wish, use a standard uh, NMEA uh, RS232 type and uh, GPS antenna. Um, and the instructions are in the manual for doing it, but you will need to supply that with um, you will need to supply it with five volts into the GPS um, unit. Now, um, here you've got a, um, a, a standard um, USB port. Here you've got um, a remote jack. There's a CW key jack. Um, and here you also then got um, a main speaker out and a sub speaker out. And obviously a typical four pin power connector. Now I'm going to turn this round. Bear with. Try not to ruin the radio. Now I'm going to try and connect this up. The trouble with all these thick wires on the end, it doesn't want to play ball. So there you go. So we are all connected up. <clears throat> on the underside here you've got the standard sort of drop down bail arm. Let's open that thing up there. Power button on the side there. Is it going to power up? No. Does help if you plug it in, doesn't it? Um, and there. Let's try again, shall we? Okay, now I'll set that on scan, don't want to do that. Now, the actual controls on the front of the radio are very easy to, to work out pretty much. Um, here you've got um, your power button. That is your transmit uh, button there where you can press and it will transmit. Here you've got, um, this will give you sort of the channels um, down the side here, but if you press and hold it, it will then take it into the programming 
uh, side of things and you can use the multi-function button to flicker through that turn that off here you've got vox and break in headphone jack and then a microphone jack now i've got not got a microphone uh, attached to it don't really need it um preamp and attenuation you press it just once for for preamp and press and hold and we'll give you the attenuator and we can turn that on or off noise blanker here noise reduction notch filter and noise reduction here and you can set the level with that um, noise blanker on and off in fact you can't have both of those on at the same time by the looks of it or can you it's not doing anything up there never mind we'll try that in a second not what that does pbt looks like i press something uh, okay right so let's get it out of that so if we press and hold that and then just press that will take us to standard two meters and we've actually got something enabled there let me so i'll come to that in a second here if we press this press and hold it we can enable the other vfo but i'm going to turn it back off and here we can flick between vfo a and b um now we're on vfo a here um let's try and just get out of that i'll put it on there okay and if we then come down this way we've also now got an sd slot in the bottom here which you can save like memories to and um, recordings and that sort of stuff and as we go along here you've got a menu button and you've got your typical kind of um menu in there that you can sort of change between your scope um, and audio uh, that sort of stuff or meter i like this screen actually this is quite handy gives you some idea of swr um, power consumed by the um, power cable dc power cable it gives you the voltage going in and it tells you what temperature the radio is at um, got compression uh, compression and alc there as well um, very useful bit of information on the front there um, don't have to have that you can set this up for just a standard scope which i've done and you can also expand that by touching the screen and it will expand and shrink the top go back in there again you've got memory pad memory record and then you've got your settings you can set lots and lots of information here now there is something um on on display there but it doesn't have a display out i wish it did in some ways however i'm not a big fan of just replicating the radio screen on a, a computer monitor it just for me it just doesn't do very much um, it makes it easier to see i suppose for those that uh, find it difficult to read these displays You've got network control in there and this is quite interesting there's some there's some quite good sort of controls that you might be able to utilize in there and i'm hoping that some third party software will will go and start you know working with that You've got a logbook in there as well by the looks of it. Um, what else can you do? If you touch, if you press and just hold that, you can set your steps. Um, and in this case, it's on 12 and a half. Um, what else can you do? Um, the multifunction button, set the RF power um, and, and monitor to touch. Set the RF power, set the mic gain, set the monitor level. Um, what else here you've got fxc press that and you can see where you you know it comes up and gives you a bit of information here it says auto tune now to, that to me is quite interesting oh, i don't know what that is if you press it it turns the afc on and off but i'm not sure there's an auto tuner in there because i know there isn't actually um what else have we got here if you press it Well, then you can hear that it does actually speak to you um if you press and hold it it will lock the dial okay press and hold it again and you're, you're away again underneath here you've actually got that standard the little tiny slidey switch thing that if you just pull out so slightly you can then adjust the weight on the wheel there um that's pretty typical so let's get it over um 
Here you've got RIT, kilohertz and memory channel, PBT, split, AB, VM, scan, tone. Press that and you get your tone controls. That's really good for your repeaters and stuff. And memory pad. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, there's no extra functions on that button. Um, it is actually a very, very straightforward um, radio, um, to be honest. I wish um, that they had given us just a, t a tad more receive. I think it would have been a nice touch to be able to receive um, from airband, um, maybe up, maybe into PMR. That would have been nice, even if um, they told me that it was... Um, reasoning behind it was because of filtering whether you know that could have been overridden very slightly by a menu function where you could disable the filter or something like that i don't know but sometimes it's nice to be able to listen just a bit further afield and also i think it would have been a nice touch if the uk could have had our nov because you'll notice here as soon as you get towards the top it flicks over to 146 and then back to 144 um would have been nice to be able to enable that even you know sort of you know some other um brands have recognized that we've got nov um openings in certain um areas and they've given us the ability to change it um and yeah and and this particular radio doesn't do that which is a shame but it's not a deal breaker for me i think it is a good radio and the fact that it's got usb built in and it's also got the ethernet port um or ethernet port whichever you like um that would that to me is is actually quite useful um in a nutshell that is about it um it's a shame there's no one on i'm surprised um i've got a 30 foot uh, high antenna out there which has got a you know reasonable amount of gain on it i'm surprised i can't hear anything um so you know you guys out there let's uh let's get on and uh and use the bands because uh now these things are out there's no excuse and if you've got one get on two meters get on 70 sems get on 23 sems and uh, give it some welly so anyway that leaves me really just to say you know thanks for watching a very brief overview um, if you guys got any clues and uh, information on this radio that might be useful leave it in the comments below um, yeah so um, what else yes yeah, so subscribe please subscribe I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers um, I've got some live um, ideas uh, that I want to try and do or put in motion and until I've got a thousand subscribers I cannot do it they will not let me do it on my mobile um, which is an absolute pain in the neck so do subscribe and um, leave comments like dislike that sort of stuff and i will see you next time thanks for watching